Hey, what's up stream keepers and welcome back to my channel. And in today's topic, I actually wanted to talk to you guys about uh, stream breeding in terms of getting you know, the end-to-end -end process where they get, you know, getting prepared to get settled and then after that molting and then getting buried and then and stuff and, and, and all that. However, I also wanted to use this opportunity to actually inject more information, more knowledge uh, regarding uh, genetics and uh, because it's very interlinked together in terms of the uh, uh, breeding and genetics as well because at the end of the day uh, i think everybody wants to have a wants to produce good streams nice streams so that they can actually enjoy the hobby as well so before we we, we dive right into this uh, topic i actually wanted to give a shout out to to those who have been very encouraging to uh, you know in, in my youtube channel they have been giving a lot of great replies and uh, one of them is Arctic Wing and you know he has been very uh, very upfront and also uh, you know in, in terms of uh, giving encouragement in terms of me sharing all this knowledge and one of the things that I, I often realize is that uh, information is not widely uh, accept uh, not widely available in, in online uh, however it is now more um, I think it's, it's more readily available. However, as the uh, the depth of the information uh, gets uh, deeper and deeper, uh, the the quality of the content gets less and lesser. Because at the end of the day, I think uh, you know a very serious, very passionate hobbyist will start to then learn uh, learn more about this uh, this stream and how to breed them, and of course genetics as well before they can actually share share it with the, the the rest of you guys. So let's dive right into today's topic uh, in terms of breeding. So in terms of breeding, you know, uh, getting the, the female stream uh, saddled, I think that is one of the, the first main, main goal of uh, stream breeding. And in order for, for the streams to get saddled, you actually need require a lot of these uh, nutrients because, you know, getting streams to saddle, uh, developing the eggs and, and all that uh, requires a lot of energy. So that's one of the reasons, you know, you can see some of my tanks over here, you can actually see them uh, having all this uh, biofilm, uh, getting getting the streams ready to actually uh, breed them. And generally for, for Singapore, you know, uh, for, for me over here, because our temperature is a uh, constant year round, it's between you know, 26 degrees to 35 degrees Celsius, it can go up really high uh, and it's normally being chilled. You know, the, the tanks are usually being chilled by either a chiller or or using an air condition. So, so in terms of getting them buried year round, it's, it's relatively easier in that sense because it's very controlled. However, I understand for those who are uh, living in the northern hemisphere, um, usually they will come into heat, you know, they will start to get settled and, and bury uh, during the uh, spring season. So before we actually go right into the spring season, I think that's where you want to get all, prepare all the, all the you know, female streams to get settled and so once spring heat and the temperature start to rise a little bit and into that comfort zone you know between 20 to 20, 24 degrees celsius and that's where you know you will get a lot of buried streams as well however they first have to get settled first so you can see in this video uh you know uh, in this video over here you can actually see the the female stream is is rather large right it's rather large and the male stream is also rather large so in, in that sense, you know, the, the size actually matters in, 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 in this context because if the female stream is very small and if the male stream is very big, chances of it, uh, you know, getting the, the stream injured in, in the process of mating is very high. So during the process of, uh, you know, selecting your, your streams for breeding and, and that, uh, other than, you know, the patterns, the colors and then all that, I think very importantly is also the size of the stream. You do not want to match uh, a, a big size stream uh, with a small size stream because that will cause some issues uh, in terms of uh, the, the the breeding process. As you can see, you know um, these two streams are relatively similar in size, and then after they they go through that routine, you know you can see it, it is the male is rather aggressive uh, in, in that sense. You know it get hooked onto the the female, and the female is actually trying to get away from the male as as opportunity arise so as you can see you know later on in, in in the video you can actually see the you know the female stream actually try to jump away from 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 the male once it, it gets uh it, it's done with its deal deeds so 
so after that, you know, after it gets uh, buried, usually what it does, uh, after it gets, uh, you know, fertilized, so the, once it gets fertilized, usually within 24 hours, the eggs actually travel down to the, you know, the, the belly area and then it gets fertilized. So as you can see that it has been uh, fertilized and then there's, there's eggs in the, in the belly. So in terms of this, uh, you know, process, it, it is a very, uh, I would say, quite a high risk process. In, in the sense, you know, trying to give birth and, and all that. So all these are very high risk uh, activities uh, for the streams as well. So coverage is very important. So remember to have a lot of mosses and hiding spaces, plants or, or something like that, you know, to, to ensure that the, uh, the females do not get harassed uh, after that. And also uh, another point is that, you know, having those, you know, the, the calyx ball or the lupal, uh, the additional biofilm actually helps to regain the, the energy loss uh, during uh, the, the, the breeding cycle. So that is the reason why I've always been using them and have always been a, an advocate of, of having uh, this natural biofilm as well. So now you guys, you guys know about this, you know, uh, very high level kind of a breeding process where you get settled, uh, you mold after you mold, you get you know the, the males will, will will latch on and then after that the the eggs will get fertilized as it's coming down from the from the the saddle. Right. So after after all this and and then after you wait for about 20, 24 to twenty eight days, it depending on 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 it, and then you will see start to see streamlets as well. And usually, as one of my videos, you can actually see that one of my videos on the red stardust you can actually see that the uh, streamlets actually congregate congregate at the uh, the collect ball area where they usually have their first first food uh, for the streamlets as well so that we can actually increase the uh, probability of the streams streamlet survival as well so now let's move on from from stream breeding to, to this genetics and why is it so important so as you can see in this uh, you know this picture over here uh, it looks like you know this is a bois and of course you know I'm just using this as an example um, Genetics is, is uh, very important and one of the reasons is because while there has been a lot of, uh, you know, uh, people have been breeding streams, a lot of breeders breeding streams and then how do we actually differentiate which genetic is, is, is good or bad? So I think one of the key important here, the, the key important uh, factor here is the, uh, the source of the stream. So the source of the stream is needs to be known. For example, if my streams comes from Taiwan. My streams comes from uh, one particular breeder Hua in, in in Taiwan. So there is nothing to hide, and uh, everything has to be put up front. For example, uh, if this boa is made up, is bred up from a mix of uh, galaxies and and a boa, or are this the main main breeding line, or the uh, where we where we have those boas and boas being uh, bred together. And have there been any you know cross uh, cross breeding done in, in that sense? So all of this is very important because one of the main reasons is that, for example, if you get one boa, very nice, great male boa, and then you put in a lot of stardust, or you put in a lot of galaxies, or you put in a lot of mix of of this uh, gene females, and then you can start to breed a lot. So this is like a mass mass production of the stream, mass breeding of the stream. Uh, and then from there, out of those few hundred, few thousand of uh, streamlets that come out, uh, there will be uh, very nice, I would say very nice uh, looking boas, so-called boas, but the genetics is actually unseen. So so a, a good breeder, you normally they will actually share, they have to actually share with you guys, you know, uh, what's the lineage, uh, how it's being bred, what kind of uh, history it, it, it actually has. So. So that means that at, at the end of the day, you are actually, you know, purchasing not just about the stream itself, you know, you're actually purchasing the entire end-to-end -end process of how it has been developed, how it's been selected, how it's been done. So if, so usually for those uh, higher grade streams, is done through a very uh, stringent selective breeding and that takes a lot of time, that takes a lot of effort and a lot of uh, culling as well. So when two streams look alike, it doesn't mean it doesn't mean that one, one they are they, you know they 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 will perform uh, the same. So that is one of the critical things that I think we we need to be uh, very cognizant about about it because uh, having very nice stream doesn't mean that the genetics is good. 
Having very nice dream just mean that it is, I will term it one time nice. What it means is that after you breathe it out, a lot of the uh, streamlets are actually having these uh, maybe um, galaxy genes or some other type of genes. genes. So, so this is one of the things that I think uh, people would have to be more wary about, uh, more uh, cognizant about. And I, and I understand that you know, in this stream industry, there has been a lot of this uh, uh, so-called cross-pollination of uh, information. For example, uh, sellers has been trying to uh, jack up prices of uh, the, the stream, uh, even if the bloodline is not, uh, you know, not, it's, it's, it's mixed, it's a type of mixed kind of bloodline uh, versus the main bloodline. So I think uh, that is uh, very important because at the end of the day, the, the, the person who actually purchased the streams eventually will know how the outcome of the, the streamlets will, will, will look like, right? And, and if, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a time period between three to six months. So after the, the streamlets start to come out and then you, you can actually see the, the quality of the streams. And the quality of the streams is actually determined by the, the parents, right? So by then, then you will actually see, uh, you will actually see the, the results of, of, of the streams and if, if somebody actually purchase a, a mixed bloodline type of a stream and at a very high price then it becomes a very uh, you know it, it becomes very sad for the for the for the for the breeder uh, for the breeder because he's actually his expectation is that you know I'm paying so much money I expect good genes but actually some of these are not true so so genetics is very difficult to um, Difficult to tell from a stream itself. Well, it can look very nice, but is the genetics behind it good? So, for example, uh, a so-called, you know, when we see like boas, there's a little bit of uh, yellowish or golden, you know, and then does it really mean that <laughs> it is uh, it has uh, golden golden boa genes in, in there? So, so this is very important. I think this has to be always to go back to the breeder and ask all this information because at the end of the day you are the purchaser you you are the ones that's going to buy the streams and you are the ones that's going to breed the streams as well so you have the right to actually know exactly what the streams is and why are you paying so much for it for example uh, a bois that looks like yellowish golden may not even have the golden genes in there it's just that it looks it, it, it looks yellowish, it looks golden for that generation to come, you know. But at the end of the day, what what we want want to share here is that uh, genetics is, is very important. And and if you keep, you know, if you keep um, crossbreeding them, crossbreeding them, and then, you know, brothers and sisters and brothers and sisters and that, uh, technically, there's, there's not much to it. Um, you're actually maintaining the, the genetics and maybe diluting a little bit. However, you will never be able to improve the uh, genetics unless you start to do a, you know, a back cross or you start to inject new blood into the same bloodline. For example, every every uh, every few you know every few generations that you start to breed them, you have to start to inject new bloodline in there so that you know the the streams don't get smaller and smaller. As you can see that you know some of the streams get smaller and smaller, and then the although the patterns may still be very nice, however the streams get smaller and smaller. Um, the lifespan, the, the robustity, and, and all that, you know, it starts to degrade over time, over generations, because there's a lot of inbreeding in there. And uh, breeders are not, are not actually trying to maintain or improve the line by inje injecting new blood in, into the colony. And injecting new blood does not mean that, you know, uh, it will become another, another type of uh, stream. What it meant is that, for example, if I have been breeding these boas for, uh, two or three generations, I want to inject new blood into it. I can always go back to the breeder and buy new blood for, from him again and then put it back in. And one of the reasons is that uh, as long as they are cro close, so-called close uh, or distance relative or distance cousin, uh, the blood will still have similarities but also differences. So that is where we want to continue to maintain the line. But what we want, what we want to do is that we also want to maintain that purity and that quality of the streams uh, genetics as well so as you can see uh, from a genetic standpoint versus the uh, the stream breeding standpoint 
So as you start to breed the streams, you know, when you're getting ready and you start to breed the streams, then you have to learn to understand that it takes time, right? So if it if the stream breeding doesn't happen, then you know, talking about genetics is, is really not, not something that is uh, put up front. So we want to talk about the stream breeding first, and then after that we talk a, lot, a little bit more about the genetics. So uh, the stream breeding part, like I said, uh, like I've mentioned before, let me re-emphasize, you know, um, have the have the quality type of uh, environment for the stream so that they can start to produce as soon as they hit the tank. And one of the reasons is, uh, you know, the is is chasing uh is racing against time because the stream, the female streams do not breed continuously and they have a, a time period, right? And and that's where we want to you know keep keep emphasizing that uh to to have the streams ready for breeding, uh to get the streams up there and uh and of course you know um. In terms of the ratio, male to female ratio, that is also very critical. The higher number of females you, you have in the tank, the, the, the probability of breeding is much higher. So, and then of course the streamless as well. So this is all in all uh, like a cycle. So, so that's the that's why I've been always emphasizing in terms of the, the breeding process. And of course, you know, once you understand and you have been very successful with breeding, uh, we want to talk a little bit more about that genetics as well. So genetics, remember that uh, even if it looks nice, it does not mean that the genetics is good. So this is something that has always been uh, the fallacies of, of many of these uh, uh, breeders as well. Um, and some, some of them actually capitalize in, in, in that because they will tell you that, you know, this is very nice, this is very nice. But they do not know the history, they do not even know the background and the lineage of how is it. Even if they bred it themselves, I think that is one of the things that you have to really check with the with the breeder so that they they can actually tell you that you know what is it all about how is how is it being bred what is the lineage and, and so on and so forth so just to recap remember the two things number one you know you need to start to breed your streams that's very critical and then when you have very good uh you know um, success with breeding and then we talk a little bit more about that genetics you put that genetics into that, that breeding cycle uh, process so then at the end of the day you'll be able to actually get very good streams and uh, have a lot of you know a lot of joy and a lot of fun when you start to see wow you know uh, the, the streamers look extremely nice you know so and so forth so thank you very much for watching this video uh, so if you like my, uh, my video please remember to give a thumbs up and if you like to see any types of videos that uh, you wish to learn more about the, the stream breeding uh, techniques and stuff like that, please remember the comments below. And for those who are new to this channel, please remember to subscribe. And until next time, peace out.